In the last video, we left off on the last two parts here and defining their footprints. And what we're going to do is we're going to define a custom footprint for both of these that takes into account their full size and the pin layout. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go all the way back to the main project page here, and we're gonna click on the footprint editor. Now what we're gonna do is go up to file and new library. Click project, click okay. Now we wanna give our library a name. Ideally, if you were doing this for a project, you would have separate libraries for each part so you can reuse them independently. But for this one, we're just gonna keep everything streamlined and just go for spo2 stuff dot pretty and click save. So now we have our new library, spo2 stuff. We can right click on that and click new footprint. Now we're gonna enter in the name of it, which is gonna be max30102 module. And we're going to select through hole as the footprint type. Click okay. And normally you would find like a data sheet for this to find out its dimensions, or you just measure it with a ruler. I can tell you that this is 14 by 14 millimeters and the pin spacing is 2.54 millimeters. So the first thing we should do is we should give this part a shape of some kind. And even though the module has rounded corners, we're not gonna bother with that. So instead I'm just going to make it a square. So I'm gonna click the square button over here, click F silkscreen, which is the front facing silkscreen layer. And now we want to change our grid size up here at the top and we want to select one millimeter. Now we're going to draw a box and we're going to use the guides over there and make a 14 by 14 millimeter box like that. And we press the letter M on the keyboard and we can move it and I'm just going to try and center it just like that. And then press escape on your keyboard to exit the drawing mode. But this by itself doesn't really do very much. All we've done so far is tell KeyCAD that this is a box that goes on the silkscreen layer. So if you press Alt-3 on your keyboard, you can see what it looks like. It's just a box. And this doesn't actually tell KeyCAD how large this part is or anything like that. This can be trouble because if we're designing the PCB and we have another part and we place that part inside of this box or have it intersect a little bit, the editor is not going to see that as a problem. So we need to tell KeyCAD that we don't want any other parts to exist inside of the space because that's where the screen module is going to be. To do that, you wanna right click on the box, go to create from selection, and then click on create rule area from selection. Now, because this is a separate board that's gonna sit on top of our PCB, all we really wanna do is tell KeyCAD that we don't wanna place another part in the same area as that module. So what we're gonna do is we're going to uncheck tracks, vias, we're gonna leave pad selected, and we're going to click keep out footprints, and then click okay. And you'll see that the box has turned into this darker blue shade and it has these lines going through it. And this is a area that's telling KeyCAD that this is where the physical board is supposed to be. And this will save us trouble in the future because it won't let us place any parts in this area. But this rule only exists for the editor. So this box here only exists when we're editing the PCB. If we press Alt-3 again, we can see our box has disappeared. Generally with footprints, you would have an outline of the part on the silkscreen layer. And so to do that, we can just add another box on top of this. We can do that by right-clicking on the rule area, create from selection, and create lines from selection. And then unclick delete source objects, click OK. And now if we press Alt-3 again, we can see our box is returned, and we still have our rule in here. So we're off to a good start. I'm going to go ahead and save this for now. And now we need to add the pins. So if we go back to the module, we can see the pins are like this. They're very, very close to the top of the board. And let's just say for our module, we're gonna have all the pins at the top. So back over here, the first thing you wanna do is you want to change the grid divisions again. So I'm gonna click up here. I said those pins are 2.54 millimeters apart. So we wanna go and select 2.54 millimeters. And then over on the right-hand side, we have this button here, add a pad. Click on that. And we can see that our mouse cursor is now snapping to 2.54 millimeter divisions. So all of these pins will line up properly automatically with that division. So we can start here and say, this is pin one, two, three, four, five, just like that. Now this is not exactly how the module is. If we take a look at it, the pins are a lot closer to the top of the board than they are on our footprint here. Uh, they're about one millimeter. And if we click on the ruler over here, we can click on the center of the pad 
and we can measure and we can see that the top of the board is around two millimeters away from the center of the pin. So it's not going to be exactly what it should be. But for this project, that's okay. We don't have to worry a whole lot about that. If you're working on other projects, you may need to be more precise with how you lay out the footprint. So moving right along, generally it is good industry practice to make the first pad a different shape, usually a square. So I'm going to right click on it, go to properties, and this is our pad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the pad shape to rectangular and then click OK. Generally, it's also a good idea, if you can, to label each of the pins with a silkscreen label. So first, I'm going to go back to the, the divisions up here at the top. I'm going to set it down to half a millimeter per division. I'm going to go over to the text button over here, click on that. This gives us our text window. I'm going to type in the name of the first pin, which is INT. I'm going to make it a bit smaller, uh, so it's 0. say 0. 0.7 by 0. 0.7, and I'll click OK. Now we have our label. I can click R to rotate it, and I can just place it, say, right about there. I'm also going to make things a bit easier so we don't have to do that every time. I'm just going to hit Escape to clear out of text mode, click on the label, Control C, Control V, and place it there, and then double click on it and change the label name to this one is going to be SDA. Click OK. I'm going to do that for each one of these pins. Okay, now I'm going to move the reference label down here. And now we can press Alt 3 and take a look at our part. So this is the footprint of what it will look like when the board is manufactured. And this makes it easy when we're designing this because now we have these labels here. We can check to make sure that each of these pins corresponds with these labels and assist us greatly when we're trying to design this and when the people are trying to build it later on. And there's other things you could do to customize it if you wanted to. You could add different shapes like circles. You could add polygons. You could even add a picture in here. It really just depends on how you want the board to look and the shape you want it to take on. But for right now, let's just keep it simple and keep it like this. I'm going to click Save, and that's it for this part. Now, when we go back to our schematic editor and we go up to the Footprint Assignment tool, we can click on that, open it up, select our Max 30102, and in our library here, should be at the bottom, should be our SPO2 stuff. Click on that, and here's our module. Double click on that, and now we've assigned that footprint we just made to our custom part. Now we gotta do the same thing again for our screen module. So I'm gonna go over to our library list down here, scroll down until I see SPO2 stuff, right click, new footprint. This is going to be our SSD 1306. It's gonna be through hole, click OK. And now I would suggest like once again, pause the video, try making this one yourself. Use exactly the same steps from before and try and fit it to the dimensions of the screen module. If you don't have a module next to you or you don't have a ruler, I'll put the dimensions on the screen and you can try and base it off of that. Okay, using exactly the same steps as before, first I'm gonna go up here, change the division to one millimeter, select a rectangle on the front silkscreen layer, draw a box of 28 by 28. I'm gonna make sure it's centered. That looks pretty centered. I'm going to create a rule off of this. So right click, create from selection, rule area, turn off tracks, vias, turn on footprints, click OK. Right click on it again. Go to create from selection, create lines, On make sure this is unchecked. Click OK. I'll press all three just to see. I got my box. I'll move the reference label down here. Now we need to add some pins. This may have stumped you when you were doing this because you might have set the divisions to 2.54 millimeters and realized that you can't actually place the pins where they should be based on this rule. That's because it's going to default to put a pin right in the center of the board when it actually needs to be a little bit off. So get around that, we're gonna go ahead and place our four pins. I'm going to hit escape and I'm going to shift and click each one of these pins. Then I'm gonna go up to the divisions up here, set it to 1.27 millimeters. Click on that, I press the letter M on my keyboard. This will let us move around these four pins. Now we want to put it right in the center, just like that. Now these pins are going to be aligned properly with how it actually is on the module. And I'm gonna make pin number one a square pin. And then I'm going to add the text labels to each of these pins. So I can press Alt-3 to take a look at it real quick. This is what it'll look like. I'm gonna hit save. Go back to the schematic editor, click on footprint layout, select the SSD 1306, go back down to our SPO2 stuff. And there you go, we have our footprint. So double click to add that to our part. Now we can hit apply, save, and continue. Click OK. 
And now we are ready to start laying things onto a PCB. We just have one small step to do before that, but then we can actually start routing a physical PCB board. And I'll see you in the next video.